Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, Edmund O'Brien as... Johnny Dollar. Your call to Flat River is ready, sir. One moment. Go ahead, please. Hello, Deputy Gray? Yeah, is this Mr. Dollar? Yeah, right. I've been assigned to the Colburn shooting. Uh, I got your telegram. Will you be here? Well, I have to ask you a favor. I got a plane space to Parkinson, and I understand there's a bus to a place called Divide, but I can't find any transportation into Blood River. Well, there isn't any. I'll have to meet you in Parkinson. Oh, good. I'm due, due to arrive at 4 tomorrow afternoon. Say, what about Coburn? Did he make a statement? No, he hadn't come to yet. If you want one, you better show some speed. The doc says he may not last till tomorrow. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you Edmund O'Brien in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account. America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. (laughs) To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Here's a taste treat you can enjoy indoors, outdoors, at work, or at play. The cool, long-lasting mint flavor refreshes you. The smooth, steady chewing helps keep you fresh and alert. Adds enjoyment to whatever you're doing. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Tri-State Life and Casualty Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of my expenditures during investigation of the Blood River matter. Expense account item one, $240, transportation and incidentals between Hartford and Parkinson. I was paged at the airport and given a note that directed me to St. Paul's Hospital, where I was met by Deputy Sheriff Tom Gray. I brought Coburn in here this morning, trying to pump some blood into him, I guess. Nothing like a hospital out in Blood River. Any improvement? Yeah, I don't think so. Slugs from a 45, four of them. If it was me, I'd have left him where he was. Moving him 40 miles didn't do him no good. Um, what did this insurance company send you out for? Mm, just a routine check. When a policyholder gets shot up, they like to know why and by whom. How much insurance he have? $50,000 worth. Oh, I didn't know that. Who's it go to? Frank Coburn, a son, and Mary Coburn, a daughter. Oh. Do you have any leads, Sheriff? Leads? Oh, I got what the hired girl said. What was that? I didn't hear about it. Oh, she was a witness. She was in the kitchen that night. A man knocked on the door, asked for some grub. Old Coburn walked in, started to shoo him away, and a man shot him down. Have you got him? No, oh, not yet, but a posse's out hunting him. We'll find him. Come on, operating room's down this way. Uh, not yet, Mary. Hello, Frank. I didn't know you two were here. Yeah, we came in as fast as we could. Now, this is Dollar. He's from your Paul's insurance company back east. Miss Coburn, Frank. Who sent for you, Dollar? The insurance company was notified of the shooting. They asked me to come out. Why? I don't think this is the time to talk about it. It's just the way they work, Frank. They like to look into things like this. Come on, Dollar, in here. Oh, Tom, wait. Can't we go in, too? The doctor told us to wait here, but we've got a right to go in if anybody has. Well, I, I guess you have, Mary, but the doctor probably thought it'd be easier for you this way if, you know, if something went wrong, you know. Well, it isn't. I want to be with him. I, I have a right to be. All right, Mary, if that's the way you want. You too, Frank? I don't see how it'll do anybody any good, but I'll come. son, Frank, was a huge man, well over six feet in his high-heeled boots. But the figure on the operating table must have towered over him during better days. I learned later that Max Colburn was more than a man. He was already a legend in the Blood River section. But here, under the intense glare of a battery of overhead lights, and under the probing instruments of the surgeon, Colburn was a great deal less than a man. Through the concealing sheets, you could realize the disintegration of his body and his massive head, skin now bloodless and drawn, 
had already taken on the aspects of a skull. I knew he'd never make a deathbed statement, but we stood there and waited two hours for him to die. That's all, nurse. Jot down the time, please, and notify the coroner. Yes, sir. Six fifteen. Oh, now, Mary, don't do that. It, it won't do no good. Oh, John, what'll I do? What'll I do? You'll be all right, Mary. Frank, take her out of here, will you? Come on, Mary. There's nothing anybody can do now. If it had been me, Doc, I'd never brought him in. Old Bull might have made it in Blood River. I'm sorry, Gray. He had to be moved. No facilities at all out there. That's your business, I guess. It was point-blank range, Gray. Multiple punctures of the stomach, single puncture of the right lung. He had to be moved. Uh, how do you do? Johnny Dollar, Doctor. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Dr. Fulton. Uh, Mr. Dollar is representing my insurance company. How do you do? I'm sorry I couldn't save him, Dollar. Uh, you did everything you could. Yeah. Who was it that uh, shot him, do you know? Not yet. I hope you'll find him. Max Colburn was a fine man. Yeah, the best. Now, what are you going to do now, Dollar? Go to Blood River? I'm still not satisfied about this thing. I'll put you up in my place. There's no hotel. Oh, thanks. I'd appreciate it. Well, nice to meet you, Dollar. Too bad it couldn't have been under better circumstances. You should never have brought him in. Well, he probably knew what he was doing. If you think he shouldn't have been brought in, why'd you let him? You're supposed to be the sheriff out here. There's nothing I could do to stop him, Frank. No, and there didn't seem to be anything you could do before to stop it either. Oh, now, calm down, Frank. The county don't pay you to run around with my sister. If you'd been spending half the time on your job that you do with her, this wouldn't have happened. That's enough, Frank. Now, shut up. And if Mary don't know, it's mostly your fault. I'm going to tell her. He's a hot-headed buzzard. Yeah, I noticed. Can we make it to Blood River tonight? Yeah, we can make it, all right. Uh, look, Dollar, I want to tell you something. It's a funny little place, only about 300 people in it. They aren't going to like you butting in. They don't like strangers. I'm used to that. Okay, as long as I told you. My Jeep is out in the back in the parking lot. It was only 40 miles to the village of Blood River. It took us until 9.30 to get there. But long before then, I had begun to feel the place. It was at the foot of a range of mountains that rose sheerly from a narrow, choked valley. And it was the mountains that gave the feeling of oppression. In the moonlight, they seemed to be leaning over the village, ready to destroy it at any moment. Gray had comfortable quarters in his cabin office. I slept fairly well. And the next morning, he drove me out to the village, to the Colburn Ranch. Quite a layout. Yeah, only 400 acres now. Colburn used to own the whole valley. There's open range up in the hills there. Well, this is the best fattening range in the whole... Would you get away, Duke? Is that dog dangerous? <laughs> yeah, could be, I guess. He's the old man's dog. He knows something's wrong, but he don't know what. Oh. That's right, isn't it, Duke boy? Yeah. Now go away, go away. Come on, boy, go. Well, come on, we'll go up to the house. Our girl will be in the kitchen, I suppose. Oh, cut it out, Duke. He's all right. Now shut up, will you? <laughs> He don't see many people dressed like you. He's got nothing on me. I don't see many dogs like him. Millie, it's Tom Gray. I don't want to talk about it no more, Tom. I told you what I saw happen. Here's a man from back east. He wants to talk to you. Why? You tell him what I said. I did, Millie, but he wants to hear it from you. I see it all happen again. That's why I don't want to talk about it. But I will if I got to. Well, thanks, Millie. I'll make it short as I can. Go on, Duke. Now, you stay outside, boy. Go on, go on. Well, this is where it happened, Dollar. He's lying right there. This way with his head on the table. Uh, two of the slugs hit the wall there. Hey, you see the marks? Yeah. Was he lying face up? That's right. Went over backwards. Shot from about here, I'd say. Is that right, Millie? I don't know. 
I went in the sitting room when I saw there was going to be trouble. How much did you see? I told Tom. It was after supper and I was cleaning up. A stranger come to the door and said he was hungry. I yelled to Mr. Colburn. I have to ask him about things. And he started right away to run him out. I fed a lot of strangers. I never heard him act that way before. Did it sound like he knew this stranger? I couldn't tell. He started cussing at him, and I run in the sitting room and held my hands over my ears till the shooting. Then I screamed. According to the description you gave Sheriff Gray, the man was short, stocky, with dark hair and heavy eyebrows. Now, can you remember anything else about him? I can remember one thing more. He was wearing some kind of a coat and had a newspaper in one pocket. Mm-hmm. Would you recognize him again if you saw him? Oh, yes. I'll never forget him. Why haven't you caught him, Tom? We'll get him. Did you see him after you heard the shot? No. I run back in here and saw Mr. Colburn. Then I run outside screaming. Randy come out of the bunkhouse, but I didn't see the man. That's Randy Drew. He didn't see this stranger coming or going. Colburn's son and daughter, where were they? They wasn't here. I don't know where Miss Colburn was, but Frankie, Mr. Colburn wasn't home yet from riding fence. Millie. What? You telling the truth? Yes. You aren't protecting anybody. Of course I ain't protecting anybody. Why should I do anything like that? Who would it be? I only ask, Millie. That's all I want here, Sheriff. Good enough. Thanks for the help, Millie. Yeah, it looks like it's going to storm. Yeah, how old is she? Huh? No, about 20, I guess. With a little work, she could be an attractive girl. She's peculiar. She grew up outside, but never quite did inside. How does she and Frankie get along? Uh, pretty good, I guess. What are you driving at? Sometimes that stranger story sounds just a little too pat. Now, hold on. I take it that's the bunkhouse? Yeah, that's it. Now, how could somebody kill Coburn and then get across all this open yard before anyone ran out to check on the shooting? I don't know. I guess shooting out here don't mean what it does where you come from. Folks here do a lot of shooting. Well, Millie said she screamed. It's pretty dark here, too. Mountains cut off the sun about 4 o'clock. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Maybe so. I told you we found a gun in a ditch near here. She said she had a newspaper in his pocket. The gun was wrapped in one when we found it. Who's this? What? That yeah, looks like Charlie Baxter. Oh, yeah, it is. He was in the posse. I wonder what he's steaming that horse about. Hold it. Oh. What's the matter, Baxter? What? What? We got him. What? We got the killer. We found him a silver star. Oh, well, good. Where is he now? We're bringing him to your place. It's Elmer Bryce. He came back? You better get in there. Right. Uh, you stay here and bring Millie in. She'll have to identify him. Use the truck. Okay. Let's get on back to town, Dollar. Who's Elmer Bryce? He used to be a hand here, just flunky. Kept the rain string watered. Choked a colt to death with a rope, and the old man Coburn down there killed him. When was this? Oh, two years ago. You know, in 35 years of ranching, Elmer Bryce was the first hand the old man ever had to fire. Folks around here ran him right out of the country. The thunderstorm swept in over the mountains and began to drench the valley during the trip back to the village. A group of maybe a dozen curious were huddled in slickers outside Gray's office waiting for a look at the prisoner. He arrived by car, went through the formalities of arrest, and a few minutes later, Colburn's hired girl walked into the office and faced him. That's him. He's the one. You swear on a Bible, Miller? Yes, I could never forget him. Okay. You can go on back to the ranch. Thanks for coming in. I'm glad they caught you. Oh, Millie. When they kill you, maybe I can sleep without seeing it happen all over again. That's enough, Millie. All right. Hey, the one, Millie? Well, Bryce, you're under arrest. Anything you say will be used against you. Uh, I didn't kill him. You deny being at the ranch? Well, I was at the ranch, but I didn't kill him. Well, what did you do? Uh, I, I was hungry. I, I thought I could get something to eat. He owes it to me. I can't get work no place because he talked about me so much. Nobody will hire me on account of the way he talks. It was my fault that coat talked. He kept pulling and the rope jammed. Colburn, he told people I was crazy and I did it for fun. That ain't right. What happened at the ranch? Well, I asked the girl for something to eat. She called Mr. Colburn. He come and cussed me out and told me to get off his land. And I left. 
Lily says when he cussed you out, you killed him. I don't care what she says. What kind of a gun do you carry? I ain't got no gun, and you can't prove I killed him. Of course, I never did. Him two is three. We want Elmer Price. Why did you go to his ranch instead of some other? I told you. Because he owes me something for what he done to me. Why don't you tell the truth so we can get on with this? Huh? I didn't kill him. You hated him. Uh, I hate a lot of people. Listen to them. Who is it? Back. Let me come in. Just a minute. All right, come in. I got it fast, Gray. Must be near to 100 out there now. They sent me in to say they wanted Bryce. Well, they can't have him. You know how they feel about old man Colburn? They want his killer for themselves. I didn't kill him. Nobody can prove I did. I think you've waited long enough, Sheriff. You better get this man into a car and get out of here. All right. Come on, Come on Bryce. On your feet. I ought to give you to him. Oh, I don't care well, what Give you me a hand, Dollar. Sure. The faster we move, the better. <laughs> Open the door, Baxter. Start out. We'll be right behind you. All right, let's go. Move, Bryce. Come on, move. Get to the car, Bryce. Quick. Now go home, folks. Anderson there. You go home. And Phil, you know better than to do this. Now go on home. Oh, yes. Bryce, get away. Let go. We don't need no outsiders. Ben, take care of this outsider. I got the killer. Use your head. This won't do it any good. There was no stopping them. I caught a last glimpse of Bryce's face as I went down into the mud of the street. Then there was nothing but hundreds of thrashing legs carrying the mob and their victim to a waiting truck. Blood River was in the process of living up to its name. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. The lively, full-bodied real mint flavor cools your mouth, moistens your throat, freshens your taste. And the chewing itself gives you a little lift, helps you keep going at your best. So for real chewing enjoyment that's refreshing and long-lasting, always keep Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. Healthful, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Gum will make every day more enjoyable. And now with our star, Edmund O'Brien, we return you to the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Deputy Sheriff Gray had fared worse than I, a boot heel had stunned him. So it was 15 minutes before we got underway in the jeep. We found Elma Bryce on the road to the Colburn Ranch, hanging from a bridge. We took his body back to the sheriff's office in the now silent village. You gotta understand how they felt about Colburn before you can begin to understand their actions. I'll never understand. I've never been part of a mob. And neither have I. Neither have they. But this is something special. The old man is gonna break up the rest of his land and parcel it out. He's done it before. He was loyal to the Blood River folk, and it meant they could have the land of their own. I could never afford it except the way he sold it. Well, you're in a bad spot, aren't you? What are you going to do about this lynching? I'd like to call back the last hour and a half. That's what I'd like to do about it. Should have kept Bryce out of Blood River, but I didn't know. These people are my friends. I don't have to go into Parkinson and name as many of them as I saw. That's what you pay for wearing a badge, I guess. Uh, as long as he break. Is there anything I can do? Uh, I think I better strap on a gun. For the first time since I got this job. Uh, see there on the desk, the receipt I made out when I took Bryce's personal things? I better have that. Is it there? Yeah, it's here. Sheriff? What? What's this? Who signed this? Oh, Charlie Maxwell. He signed because Bryce couldn't write. That's his ex just above there. He couldn't write? Well, no, he wasn't much for brains. You saw that. He couldn't write his own name, but he carried a newspaper around with him? Why? Just to have it handy for wrapping guns? Or did he learn to read without learning to write? Well, I'll oh, it's going to be a strange kind of justice, Sheriff. If he was telling the truth in your village killed an innocent man, those that go free will live with that for the rest of their lives. I'll leave the Jeep with you. I'll drive Maxwell's pickup into Parkinson. Yeah, thanks. Uh, there's some of my clothes and boots you can wear. Better get out of them wet ones. And just take this advice, will you? Don't go throwing your weight around. It's going to send them crazy. Be careful. 
I'll be back after supper. The single street was still silent and empty when I left the Colburn Ranch. The mountains were closing in again. There should have been lights in the windows of the houses, but instead they were dark. And I could feel the eyes of the people who stood inside them, watching me pass. Finally, almost at the edge of town, a knot of men stepped from a doorway and waved me to a stop. Where's Tom Gray? He went into Parkinson. What for? To report the lynching. Lynching? Hear that, boys? He says somebody strung up the killer. I don't believe it. From what I hear, he hung himself. And good... Why are you trying this out on me? I'm not here to arrest you. I couldn't if I wanted to. What are you doing here? I'm still looking for Max Colburn's murderer. Bryce hung himself. He shouldn't have, because he wasn't guilty. Who says that? Sheriff Gray and I. There was nothing against him but your personal feelings and some circumstantial evidence. He's the one who done it. He even said so. Said what? That he went to the ranch first off. Why else would he do that? He was hungry. Now, come on. Get out of my way. If you people think the rest of the story will help you peace of mind, any, I'll try to get it for you. But Bryce was innocent. Think about that for the time being. Go on, move it, Ben. I'm coming through. Let him go, Ben. Come on, boys. He can't hurt us. These clothes belong to a friend of yours. <laughs> Who is it? Johnny Dollar, Miss Colburn. Oh. Who is it, Mary? It's Mr. Dollar, Frank. Oh, yeah. Come on in, Dollar. Thanks. We uh, heard about Bryce. I'm sorry it went that way. Any man, I, I don't care what he is, has a... A right to a trial. Yeah. Lynching is one of man's least pleasant habits. This one especially, it looks like Bryce was innocent. No, he wasn't. Millie said he was the one. There could have been a lot of things wrong with her statement. She didn't see it happen. She only heard it. Somebody else could have taken advantage of Bryce's visit and done the shooting himself. I don't follow you. He did come out here. He admitted it. But I don't think he killed your father. He hated him. Mary, stop that. Sure, he hated him. Everybody knew it. With that and Millie's statement... Who would bother to look any further than poor, dim-witted Elmer Bryce? Oh, Frank. Oh, Frank, Frank. Shut up, Mary. Go on in the other room. Wait a minute. What's the matter with her? She's upset. Frank, you killed him. Shut up. No. You'd like that to be true, wouldn't you? You said you would. You said you wouldn't. You killed him. I'm going to the sheriff, Frank, and don't try to stop me. She's off her head. Like everybody else in this blasted hole. Yeah? Why should she have said that? Because I lost my temper one night. Told the old man he'd better blow his own brains out before I did it for him. Because he forgot how to think with them. When was that? A couple of weeks back. Maybe I was hot enough to mean it at the time, but I... Well, I cooled off. I wouldn't kill my own pa. Well, there goes your sister, Frank. Sheriff Gray mentioned that he was going to sell the rest of his land. Was that the cause of the trouble? Yeah. He didn't care what happened to his kids. I told him with all the war talk, this was the time to hang on to it, restock the herds, and get ready to make some money. Ranch is yours now. That's right. Mine and Mary's. Where were you when your father was killed? I was riding fences up by Red Knoll. Do you have any way to prove that? Any witnesses? You don't run into anybody up that way. That's our land. Folks stay off it. What about it, Frank? What about it? There's a lot stacked up against you. I know it. You can depend on my sister. You and anybody else would like to string me up for it. What about Millie? Was she in it with you? In it? Now, wait. Don't get the wrong idea. I didn't kill my pa. There's a lot stacked up against you. Well, there are places to go. I don't like jails and courtrooms. I think I'll just fade until it blows over. That's not the way. You won't make it. You're going to stop me? I'm being paid to see this thing cleaned up. I'll have to try. Get out of my way, Dollar. You sit down until the sheriff gets you. Get away from the door. 
You're an outsider. It's none of your affair. Now, get out of the way. I said get out of the way. What's this to you? Stay where you are. You can't make me... No, I don't want to have to kill you, so don't get up. Frankie. What do you want, Millie? What are you doing with that gun? You've got to kill him, Frankie. Get out of here. You've got to, for me. Why? Because I lied. I lied to everybody. What about? About your pa. Elmer Bryce didn't kill him. Millie. Because I did. I killed him for you. You told me that night you wished he was dead. You remember that night? I remember, Millie. And I told you I'd do anything for you. Remember that? Anything. Yeah, I remember. I lied. Elmer Bryce came, but I stayed in the kitchen and heard everything he said. I knew he hated your pa, and after he ran away, I thought about it. You're crazy, Millie. I waited for a while, and when I knew nobody saw that man leave, I yelled to your pa again. And when he come in, I shot him. And that night, I threw away the gun. What's the matter with you, Millie? You know what's the matter. Now, you can't run off and leave me. You've got to help me. I can't help you. You... You've got to kill this man. I won't do it, Millie. Then you've got to take me away with you. I'm not going away now. I don't have to. I didn't have anything to do with it. This is the end for you and me. All right, Frankie. Hey, get down. Don't. Don't do it. Don't. Kill her. Ah. Drop it. Yeah. Let go. All right. I did it for him. Now I don't care what happens to me. As far as I was concerned, that was it. Frank Coburn lost a lot of blood, but not his life. And his sister still had to live at the ranch with her ill-tempered brother. The hired girl who brought all this about was taken by the sheriff. When I left Blood River, the state had moved in to see what it could do about the lynching. But what that is, I don't know. The entire village was guilty of murder. And what could anybody do about that? All I know is that the original murder was not committed with the idea of insurance fraud. And in spite of the mess I got into, that's what I was hired to learn. Expense account item two, same as item one. Expense account total, $740. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, to make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to refreshing, delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum. There's lots of cooling, real mint flavor in every stick. And chewing Wrigley Spearmint helps keep you feeling fresh and alert. You feel better, work better, get more fun out of doing things. So indoors, outdoors, wherever you go, keep some healthful, refreshing Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy. To make every day more enjoyable, treat yourself often to delicious Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Gum and stars Edmund O'Brien in the title role, written by Gil Dowd, with music composed and conducted by Leith Stevens. Edmund O'Brien could now be seen starring in the Columbia Pictures production, 7-Eleven Ocean Drive. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Bill Conrad, Junius Matthews, Sammy Hill, Clayton Post, Tyler McVeigh, Dave Light, and Howard Culver. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you've enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum every day. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time when, from Hollywood, Edmund O'Brien returns in another adventure of Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>